There's something missing with your maps, and today I'm going to show you how to level up your map animations. If you watch the entire video, these techniques will take you from beginner to pro. I'm going to show you some things with map styles that I've never seen anyone else teach on YouTube. My goal for this series is to teach you a toolbox of techniques you can pull from in all your future animations. These techniques are super simple and anyone can do them, but oftentimes it just takes knowing these things exist to make better maps. Also, I'm going to be doing a masterclass on GRLOs and putting it all on this channel for free. It's going to be everything I know, but I want to make sure people will watch it. So if you're interested in this, help me reach my subscriber goal so I know the course will reach as many people as possible. We have quite a lot of techniques to get through and some of them build off the styles we make in the first section. So make sure you don't skip around or you might get confused why some things don't look quite right. Okay, so I'm going to show you some things that you probably never realized existed in your map styles. And I'm going to show you how you can layer these effects on top of your existing map comps to actually create a better effect. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a world map comp and I'm going to hit next. And what I actually want to come to is this ESRI style. And if you select this and then you click it one more time to go into editing, you'll see you have a lot of drop downs here. So this gray canvas is very good if you want to do like a monochromatic, uh, very basic animation. Uh, you see Vox use this uh, map style a lot as well. But what I really want to show you is this world terrain map. So if you go ahead, you can see this is white and black, and that's going to be important because that means we can add this map uh, to any of our base maps. So if we go ahead and hit apply on this and we actually create the map comp, we can come right back to our uh, GeoLows panel here and we can create a new map comp. And where it says link, we're going to link this map comp to our previous map comp. So now when we move this map comp it will move the other one as well once we actually create it so i'm going to hit next on this and i'm just going to choose a basic map here so i'm going to go ahead and hit apply and create okay so now i'm going to go ahead and move this and you can see if we zoom out here and we come and turn this off we can see our other map also zoomed out so if we just move this we can see everything's matched up here so now i'm going to show you what this map actually does for us so we take our ESRI uh, topography data and bring it to the top. We can set this to a blend mode like multiply. And now you can see we're getting all of that topography data on top of our base map. So I finalized a single frame of my animation and I went to the Middle East over here just so you can see it better. And another thing we could do is we can actually customize the colors of this base map while keeping this topography colors. So we have this water and you can see this topography data also includes water. So if we turn this off, you can see it's affecting our water. But I want to make this water a little bit of a lighter color. So that's quite simple to do. We could just come back into our settings here and under our base map just click settings and we can edit all of these settings so just by clicking the uh, edit imagery icon here we can come into the water and just make this a little bit brighter and we can also come over here to this land color and just make this more of a orange color and we can hit apply on that i'm also just going to turn off these uh, borders as well and hit apply and apply once more and i'm going to go ahead and finalize the frame so I changed my colors just a little bit here to make it look a little bit more deserty, and I think this is looking pretty good. So I want to come back in here and show you some more maps that you might not be familiar with. So I'm going to create a new map comp, and if we come under Cardo DB right here, and we click edit on this, you can see there's quite a bit of styles here as well. So this is already a minimalistic map, but if you come under here, you can look at like Voyager, and this is a pretty nifty style. Uh, but what I use a lot is the Dark Matter style, and this is more akin to what you actually see in your GeoLos window. Uh, one thing to note is these labels are actually uh, built into the map. So if you want to have custom control over the labels, uh, do it with no labels. And then have the labels turned on on the GLOs imagery. That way GLOs is actually controlling the label. And I'm going to show you one more neat map that I don't see people use often, but it's super useful if you just want something that looks nice and professional uh, right off the bat. So come into ESRI and come into the editing. And you can see you have a lot of maps here. Uh, you have shaded relief, which is pretty similar to the topography, uh, just a bit more detailed. So you could scroll through these. I mean, there's some pretty uh, beautiful looking maps here. Uh, but the one I want to show you is this National Geographic map. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply on this and just hit create so we can scroll around it. So you can see this is kind of like a map that you would get in a school classroom. And it has everything labeled for you. And like with the other map, uh, these labels are actually baked in. So you don't have a lot of custom ability. You can't come in and, and turn them off or anything like that. But this map is going to serve as a good example for what I'm going to show you next. So I've zoomed all the way out here and I actually want to show you some basic color grading you could do to make your maps look a little bit nicer. So I'm going to create a new adjustment layer and I'm going to come over here and grab a lumetry color and come, and come over the creative right here. And you have this look and basically you're going to have a lot of presets of what you can set. So you can kind of just play around with these and see what looks best on your map style. Uh, for example, you have center space right here. This is going to make it look like it was 
I filmed on Cinespace Film. So you can see this is a little intense for a map, so you can play with the intensity as well and turn it down. But if you don't want your colors to pop like this, there's plenty of other ones. I found HDRs look the best uh, for most of the GeoLurs maps. So for example, this one down here is looking pretty good. But there's a lot you can play around with to get a lot of different cinematic styles. So now I'm in actually my map color account and I want to show you how you could create super custom maps outside of the custom ability in Geo Layers. Uh, and if you don't use map color, uh, don't worry because map box is going to have the exact same thing. So you see you have your standard maps here and if you actually click one of these, it's going to let you edit it. And then with this edited map, you can import it into Geo Layers. So I'm just going to select this basic map here and just hit customize a copy right here. And that's going to put you in this kind of editor right here and it's going to let you change whatever you want. So if you click on the side over here and you come under layers, you have everything that you can edit and you can even add stuff that's not here. So just click layer and you see you have all of this. And if you come under this, you have mountain peaks, parks, uh, pretty much anything you want. So say for example, we want to create something that's going to show us the railroad system and we want to create a map of the uh, railways. We could just simply come under transport over here and we could come under railways. And let's set our railways to be red and you can see on our map that's reflected so here at union station we can see all the different rail lines and we can go ahead and customize this map even more so for example if we don't want the road labels we could turn those off and same thing for these stations and the airports so i'm going to go ahead and fade out these roads as well because i do want to see them but i don't want them to be so harsh so i think something like 40 is good and you can see you have a lot of customability so we have the visibility with these uh railways which is basically saying if we're all the way out here, we can still see them. But if we bring this visibility down, then as we come up, we're not going to be able to see them anymore. So I'm okay with seeing them from as far as possible. Uh, so I'm just going to keep them on for now. So these buildings, I'm going to tweak the color of them just a little bit. So kind of give it a little bit of a gradient. And I'm just going to come and make these uh, buildings white. Maybe something more like this. And I'm going to come back to this transport and just make this uh, a little bit of a lighter color and bring this over as well so it's not getting darker so i think it's looking pretty good i'm going to bring up the width on this as well so it's a bit easier to see and i'm going to turn that off this transit so we can see these are all land masses here all right so that's going to be under our nature i could just turn that off completely if you want or you can come in here and give it a custom color as well and i see we have residential buildings i'm going to turn that off for now then if we zoom out we have this map that looks super custom but we made it super quickly now I'm going to take this water and play with the colors here a little bit as well. So I'm just going to select the main water here and I'm going to give this a little bit more of a darker color. So I want it to have a little bit of blue just so we can hardly tell it's blue. So something like this. So I'm going to turn these paths off. Uh, these are just walking paths and you can see that I noted in these uh, kind of sidewalk uh, dashes. So I'm just going to turn that off and I'm going to keep the road network. Up. So now I'm going to jump out of this and we can see if we've come up. Uh, this is what our map's looking like. We have this red line going all across the country or anywhere that these uh, red lines are connected. So now I'm going to show you how to take this map into GeoLayers. The first thing you want to do is hit save and give it a name. I'm just going to name mine uh, Railroads. And then you want to come up here and hit publish. And it's going to uh, show you a side by side of how it was before and what your changes look like. I uh, just go ahead and hit publish. Okay, so once you hit publish, you can see a map down here in the preview. I just go ahead and click this and you want to copy this uh, vector style right here. Now, if we come back into GeoLos and we come to our create new map, prompt, uh, hit next on this and uh, hold control and click import map pump imagery style or colors over here. It's going to give you a URL and just uh, control V and paste that in there and hit import. And you can see in this GeoLos window, uh, this is actually all map that we made. So if I zoom into this while well, zoom level kicks in, uh, we can see the railroad systems. So I'm going to go ahead and hit create on that. We come over here and we type in Washington, which is where we were in the preview. We'll see it's just like it was in the other preview. So this is a pretty basic example, but you can extrapolate this to anything you want. And if you have custom data, you're able to show it in GeoLayers, but you can also import it to your map tower. And it's a lot of times more seamless to get the map how you want it to look in map tower before you bring it into GeoLayers. You're going to have a much more fluid experience, whereas in GeoLayers, there's always going to be a lot of lag uh, as you go through and edit things.